when it comes to basic model building, pretty much these are the only tools that you'll be needing. You don't need all these fancy saws and drills and things like that. Pretty much what you see here is what you need. I don't know, it's just like the no normal typical stuff. Pliers, nail clippers, scissors, tweezers, exacto knives, paintbrush. Well, pretty much, I don't know, up to this point, I just need these two. These are just for the detail stuff. These are, well, I don't know, these are just for the, the dashboard and things like that. If When you don't want to paint them. And pretty much, um, these are the only two that I, still, that I like to use these days. And, you know, the typical normal Timia cement. The extra thin one and the normal one. Uh, oh, I made a video for these two guys recently. Um, if you want to know how these two are uh, to be used, refer to that video, okay? And just like the normal crazy glue. Let's see, what else do we have here? These One of these guys is actually pretty good. Uh, the clothing clip. It's actually for this suspension over here. Sometimes Taimiya, I don't know, Taimiya or Asoma come up with these kits that have these suspensions, these springs here. Um, sometimes, even the, the instruction clearly, clearly, clearly said that um, that you need tape to secure this part here onto the chassis because the suspension, the spring would sort of pop this thing right off. Therefore, I don't want the tape. I just use one of these. Clip it right on. Apply crazy glue onto it. Crazy glue onto it, and the parts secure in just a couple minutes. Well, probably you see me like going through these things pretty fast right now. But I'll talk about some of these like in just a couple minutes. And what else do we have? Masking tape. Get these Timia ones, okay? Um, ooh, I put the masking tape. When you come across this Timia one here, uh, don't buy it. Get the normal one, okay? This one's actually a piece of well crap. This is actually pretty. This is actually the good stuff, okay? Let's see what else. Timia compound. I'll talk about these guys in just a couple minutes, and why this brush is here, and the cloth that you'll be needing. Uh, decal softener. It's actually for the race. Uh, it's actually for the racing cars, um, and the Q-tip. I'll talk about these guys uh, in just a couple minutes. Let's see what else do we have here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Caps. It's actually quite useful. I'll talk about these guys as well. Uh, okay. Let's talk about these tools first. Um, I don't know, when you start off basic uh, model car building, without modification or anything, when, it, when you start using saw and drills and things like that, these are the basic stuff that you'll be needing. A pair, uh, pair of good cutting pliers, as you can tell I use these oh, German ones, these Clipex ones. But um, I don't know, these are actually, I got these from, um, I use these when I'm working, but um, but normally, I use the other brand, Blue Point. It's actually the car tools brand it's related to Snap-on. And um, if you guys are using like cutting pliers, uh, you can, you guys can actually go to these hardware stores, pick up these, um, you know, a pair of cheap ones is actually pretty good. But um, just don't pick up the made in China ones. You want to kill yourself after a couple of minutes when you're using those. Okay, and. Um, before I use pliers, I like to use nail clippers. Nail clippers are actually quite nice. What you can do is that when you cut off the part, you can actually get rid of these, um, I don't know, these access bits off as well. Let's get this into focus, come on. It's not focusing. Like this part here. After when I remove this part from off of the parts tree, with the, my nail clipper, I can actually do this, sort of like get rid of the access stuff and then use the knife to get rid of the rest of them off, okay? And let's move on to a pair of scissors. Actually, a pair of good scissors is actually really useful when it comes to removing the decals. Um, uh, for example, <clears throat> if you're doing a race car, such as this guy here, a pair of good scissors is actually really useful when you're cutting around this part, uh, getting rid of the fuzzies um, away from the decal. And if you have like this really pair of really horrible scissors, trust me, you just want to kill yourself, okay? Let's move on to, uh, speaking of decals, I want to move on to tweezers too. 
uh, tweezer is actually quite useful when it comes to um, putting decals onto the car because sometimes you don't want to just you don't want to dip your hands into that puddle of water and then sort of dragging it out and things like that. You want a pair of good de uh, tweezers. Take the decal out, place it on the body, and slide it right off from that piece of paper. And that's really useful. Okay, so also a pair of pliers is actually quite useful when it comes to these tight spots here. For example, I want to remove this rod from my suspension, and I don't. I can, well, at this point, I can use my hand just pop it right off. But for example, sometimes um, I'll use this as an example. I want to get rid of. I want to move this, so I'll use a pair of tweezers, just like that. And because this part is actually quite fragile, and what I'd like to do is that, like do this, just pop it back in. Same time, it goes in, go into these tight spots. Like um, doesn't have any of this chassis here. Uh, you probably get my drift. But, um, for example. Sometimes you have to do something like this over here, and your hands up it's too big, so you can't squeeze in there. And therefore, I can just put my tweezer right in there, start adjusting stuff. And it happened to me many times. Okay, so this is not just for decals; it's actually for going to these tight spots and things like that. Moving on, let's see. Uh, I want to talk about the tooth, the paintbrush. Pretty much the paintbrush I don't use them anymore. Uh, I just like to use these ones. After a while, you just pretty much start spray painting everything. You know, the dashboard, the seats, and um, um, body, exhaust. You know, starts. You eventually start spraying stuff, and um, these ones I just get tossed aside these days. I don't know what I don't use them that much anymore. I like to use these ones. Um, the Tamiya one's actually pretty quite it's pretty it's actually quite good. This one here. Um at this point, as you can tell, it's just like the fur is like everywhere. But after when you sort of like use water to uh, moistening moisten moistening it up moist it up and um it actually it's it turns pretty it turns pretty thin. And this one's actually I use this for steering wheel all the time. And um sometimes um at the same time, I bought this from a from an art store. It's actually really thin. It's actually better than most of the modeling brush that I got, that I have. And um, this one's actually I used this for I don't know the buttons on the dashboard and things like that. And this one's really useful. Okay, so pick up a set of I don't know Timea paintbrush. This usually comes in a set like this. At the same time, pick up another set of these. It's really it, this guy will come really handy after a while. Okay. Oh, at the same time, remember to protect this guy. It comes in a little cap, and after when you're done, just place it back on, or else the fur will just go. The fur will just go everywhere, and you just want to kill yourself after a while. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I forget it. So I'll toss this aside first. And I explained this and this. And let's move on to hmm, masking tape I talked about. Now let's talk about compound. It's actually quite important. Um, for example, in what situation I what uh, I would use the red compound is that um, when I start using the polycarbonate paint from Timea. Because when it comes, um, when I'm finished with the car polycarbonate paint, the surface is actually quite rough. I have all these orange peel on it. Therefore, after I spray the cloth clear on it, I need to use the Timea compound, the core one. Coarse one. I don't know how to pronounce that. And um, the red cap one. And I would like to use this one to sort of like smooth out the rough, rough surface. After when that, um, when I'm done with this, the body is actually really all—it's all scratched up. Um, normal, most of the people who actually like from red, they would finish the red one and then move on to the blue one here, the fine one here. I usually like to skip this step. I usually like to from the the 
the from the red one all the way to the finishing one, the white one. I usually skip this step, but sometimes when I'm using the TS paint, I just start off with this and enough and finish it with this. Because the TS is actually the TS paint is actually smooth enough and the particles are actually small enough for me not to be able to use this. Because this one's actually really rough. It'll end up sometimes when you're finished with um, clear coat. If you apply way too much, if you overuse this, it will end up killing your paint job. And sometimes you might accidentally wipe off the coat of clear and sort of like remove the base paint as well. And you have to be really be careful when you when you're using this. Therefore, uh, if I'm using the TS paint, I like to start off with this and finish it with this. If I'm using the polycarbonate paint, I like to start off with this and normally I'll, I'll finish with this. Okay. The, uh, at the same time, probably you're asking why is there a brush and a piece of cloth here. I like to use these um, glasses cloth for for when it comes to polishing. Well, I don't know why, because I have tons of these laying at home at the same time. It's actually quite a smooth, sur uh, it's actually, it's not that rough, it's actually quite soft, these glasses cloth. And because the reason is that, well, it's pretty clear. Um, you need these things to clean your glasses, therefore, it's actually quite soft and smooth. If you come, when, for example, if you start polishing with like, I don't know, paper towels or Kleenex, then your glasses will eventually get scratched up. Same concept, you can use, adopt this concept onto your model car. Okay? Let's see what else. Ah, also the paint. Uh, also the paintbrush. Why is that? Um, what is it for? After when you finish with these compound, the compound might get stuck in these cracks in between. And um, sometimes, well, probably you're saying, um, why not use this brush instead? Because this brush is actually quite, the little fur over here is actually quite soft. You need something a little bit harder to, to get rid, rid of those dirt, uh, get rid of these compounds there. Therefore, I, what I do is I turn on the water, I, I use the water, I turn on the tap water, start rinsing it, rinse, rinsing it, at the same time I start cleaning off the compound off these little nooks and crannies over here. It's like, I don't know, like these, especially these window gap window frames here and these door hinges or these these door handles over here they usually have tons of compounds got stuck inside and therefore what I like to do is turn on the water rinsing it at the same time cleaning it right off okay pick one of these cost you I don't know buck or two or less okay ah oh, let's see oh I'm gonna have a problem explaining this I'm gonna end up killing myself. Ah, uh, these mark setter and mark softener. Um, the way I used it, um, the reason, well, actually, this is actually quite handy when you use when you're about to make um, I don't know, a race car, sort of like this focus that I have here. Um, let's put these aside first. <clears throat> Uh, I want to talk about these after. And um, the reason why these are actually quite important when you're building a race car is that sometimes the decal is actually not strong enough to able to stuck in this groove over here. This fender over here. Therefore, what you should do is that uh, you start off with this, the mark setter, apply some under this gap, under this fender over here, the, between the body and the fender, so like paint this area up. With this mark saw, mark setter, the mark setter won't kill your paint job, and um, it's actually it's harmless to your paint. And after we apply on uh, apply the mark setter on it, apply the decal on it too. At this point, once you apply the decal on it, use the tissue, not paper towel, tissue, to sort of like give it like a little squeeze right onto it. Just like uh, I'll use this as an example. So sort of like this. I'll make a video of this later on. I'll just give you like a crash course of this right now. So sort of like squeeze out the water droplets and everything out. After when you up, squeeze out the water droplets, apply the mark soft, the mark soft softener on it. 
therefore, this will actually soften the decal up and it just like fits right in this groove here. Probably at this time you're saying to yourself, but sometimes, um, but how come sometimes the the decal actually get wrinkled up once I apply the mark softener on it? But um, at that point, if you're, for example, if you're, um, the normal situation what you should do is that you just let this, the mark softener, just sit there to, to, to do its job. After a while, the decal will just like be wrinkle free. But if you're worried about or or um, sometimes it happened to me before, for example, the mark soft softener you have, you have like a big droplet like this. Uh, I'll use this this exact example. If I apply a little bit onto it, you might end up having like a big blob of like this on that part of decal. This big blob over here would end up killing your paint at the same. Well, end up killing your decal. It might have like um. I don't know, uh, have like a little damage mark on the decal. What, one thing I really like to do is that I like to use a Q-tip at the same time when you're using applying decal, use a Q-tip. Uh, you can just actually do this and sort of like squeeze all the water out and everything. At the same time, if you, if for example, if you have a big blob of these mark soft, mark, uh, these mark softener on it, on your decal, moisten the Q-tip and sort of like run it on like this to get rid of that uh, decal off to get rid of this mark softener off at the same time you can sort of like get rid of the wrinkle as well but you have to do it with the moist q-tip at the same time you have to roll it like this okay this is just like a really crash just like a crash course because um I will make a video of this later if I have time if I remember okay and let's see what else I want to talk about. Let's see. I want to talk about spray painting. Probably you're asking yourself, probably you're asking like, okay, what primer should I use? You can refer uh, the primer and the paint from my other video. Uh, I think it's called uh, which primer you should use. Go into the video, you see what's there, and um, you can actually refer which primer is suitable in what situation, okay? And um, I want to move on to this body spray, spray, spraying the body part. Let's see. Ah, let's get rid of this first. <clears throat> uh, okay, when you're spraying the body, Timea came out with something like, I don't know, this silly looking tool. It's sort of like a stage, and there's these two claws sticking out, so it grips onto your body like this. At the same time, um, and you're sort of like spinning around when you're spray painting. That's kind of silly. I, I, didn't, I, didn't get, I didn't get that tool, it's, <laughs> first of all. Second of all, you don't need that. <clears throat> When you're spraying a body, the only thing I need is actually two spray paint can cap uh, taped together. That's it. That's the only thing you need. You're probably saying, "How do you how do you use it?" Well, it's actually pretty much straightforward. Uh, let's do some demonstration. What I like to do is that I like to make these tape into a ball and sometimes I like to do this as well. Because this focus here is actually the bead propeller here is actually the grooves the arc is actually quite tight. So I can't not able to squeeze this cap right in to secure it. That's the reason why I'm making these tape this ball, this little ball over here. And sometimes I like to do this as well. Sort of make this little arc, tape, I don't know, tape arc or whatever. And do it like this. And... Ta-da! See? Who needs that little Timea 
spray painting whatever stage, huh? When you have tools just like right near you. At the same time, when you're doing this, you have to be careful. Uh, when you're doing this, you have to be really careful. Um, when I put this on earlier, I don't know, a couple seconds ago, you can see the body start wobbling itself. Make sure when you're, um, first of all, make sure it's secure. Second of all, when you're applying tape, when you're putting your body on, when you're putting the body onto this cap here, make sure don't don't put it like this. Make sure you put it sideways, like ninety. Uh, give it like a ninety degrees and do it like this. If you, for example, if the tape is actually like from, I don't know, the straight direction, sometimes you might have a problem. When you spray painting, the body will start wobbling, start wobble, start wobbling. And this have a possibility of, well, when you're spray painting, the body might just like go right onto the right, right onto the floor, and that's the last thing you need, okay? And that's the reason why I like to do this instead. Put it sideways. The tape here will secure the B propeller. At the same time, the tape is actually stick right onto the uh, the roof over here as well. Okay, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Okay. And if you guys get a chance, please pick up one of these. <coughs> pick up one of these like display cases. It's actually really handy when it comes to a situation like spray painting. After when you're done spray painting, just stick the body right into the display case to make sure dust free. Okay? Let's move on to um I think I talked about masking tape. Well let's talk about it again. Forget it. Um, masking tape. This is actually, um, probably you might ask, okay, what is it for? It's actually for the win window frame. You can refer to how to paint the window frame to my other video. How to paint the window frame by using an airbrush and a paintbrush as well. But, um, probably you guys might come across these masking tape earlier. Uh, well, not earlier, when you guys are in the model car store. This is actually off, this is actually a Timea masking tape. They actually have a Timea label stick right onto the bag, but when you look closely, it's not it's not actually from Timea. It's actually from Kamoi. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm a I don't know how to pronounce words, okay? Kamoi tape. And um this is actually one of the worst masking tape I ever come across. And um I think I bought this a while ago and I just wanna kill myself after a while. As you can tell See, it's not good. Start peeling off like uh, it's not that great. It's not strong enough. And um I kinda hate this roll of tape as and as you can tell, dust gather all over it. And you can probably tell right off the bat that um oh yeah, I, I love this tape. I wanna kill myself when I'm using this, okay? So just get these normal timey these orange one instead. These ones are really good. Uh, they're strong. They can actually mask that they can actually cover things up and they're really nice. I love these tape. And um I I did a lot of design by used I did a lot of fancy paint jobs, you know, like these flame jobs and things like that from this time yet tape, okay? And um it's actually quite handy, it's really good. Uh like I would recommend pick up like two more rolls of let's see. <clears throat> I don't know, pick up two rolls of these instead of buying one of these piece of crap, okay? I'd rather use this instead. I'd rather just buy another one. Okay? And uh, let's see what else. I want to talk about... Oh, one tool I forgot to mention. Toothpick. It's actually quite handy. Let's see, where's that cap? Let's remove this focus again. Toothpick. One of the best tools that... I don't know model builder can actually use. As you can tell, I have two rear view mirrors here. It's off from this focus. And, as you can tell, um, what I did was, I just grabbed like one toothpick, chop it in half, and um, put some masking tape on it, 
and stick it, stick the rear view mirror right on, um, I don't know, the part where you keep the mirror. It's actually a little groove right in there. Just stick it right in and um, start spray painting. And this is what I did. And you don't need all these fancy schmancy equipment and things like that. I, um, I like to, sometimes, I remember back then I like to use this mating surface here. You know, the part that where you stick around to the body. And, um, after a while I realized it's not that great because I couldn't do, like, I couldn't spray it everywhere. Sometimes I miss these gaps over here. Like, this, the bottom part, uh, sometimes I would miss the spraying the bottom part and everything. And that's the reason why, like, sometimes I like to change it to do this, um, sticking it right into the, the, the groove where the mirror is, okay? And, um, what I did was, again, I used one of these caps, these Tamiya spray paint caps, stick it right on. And start spraying away, just like that. And when I'm done, just stick it into that uh, display case I have there. Okay. Let's see what else. Ah, <clears throat> if you're a new builder and you come across Timea instruction, and you see this paint uh, right over here, it's actually a trap. Sometimes go through it before you buy all these paint. And he would probably say that, um, I don't know, pick up all these colors. To be honest, you don't really need to pick up all these colors. For example, the perfect example is that, um, well, from my point of view, XF16, which is flat aluminum, and X11 chrome silver, it's actually the same thing. Give it a try. Um, I think I tried it, I tried it before, and it's, it's no difference. And it's actually kind of stupid too, what they did here. Probably they just want to make some money off of you guys. And um, one this 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 is actually from um, the Tamiya MP44. This is actually my engineer. Actually, it's my friend's instruction. And um, this is the first time he built a model car. And uh, when he got this, when he bought this, he said to me, "Do I need to buy all these paint?" I was like, "Hell no! You don't need to buy all these paint. You're insane." Uh, probably you need some of these pages for that one tiny itsy, tiny spot there, and you know what? <clears throat> I was right. Perfect example. X5 over here, green. You probably said to yourself, okay, which part do I need green for? And he, my friend, he flipped through the whole instruction, and he finally found which part you need green for. And it's just this tiny, teeny little button over here on the dashboard. And that's it, X5. And that's it, X4, which is, I think it's blue. X4, blue. See? That's all you need. It's like one tiny little spot you need blue for. And that's kind of silly. Because probably time I wanted to make some money off of you guys. And um, you don't really need these unless you have like 12, I don't know, 100 model kits or 12 model kits at home and probably um, the, the blue and the green might come in useful other than that if you have if you're planning to just build one kit you don't really buy this paint just, just um, I don't know just get it off from someone or um, you don't know, just skip this part or maybe you look at the part if it's just necessary or not but sometimes what I like to do is that um, again for new beginners um, if you bought like a new model and um, you're eager to build it, just go through the instruction first to see which paint they need and you need to buy. Sometimes like for example, again, Tamiya have this paint list over here. You don't need all those colors. You might need some of them. And um, this might come to, like, go through it, probably save yourself a couple, a couple bucks too. Another perfect example of wasting money on paint is that this focus over here is the Rossi edition, the Valentino Rossi edition, the Monza Rally winner. Perfect example. Goes to Timea cars as well, the Timea race cars as well. Okay, this footwork over here, you know, the axle and the suspension, the brakes and everything. He'll probably say to you, okay, you need to paint this part, you know, black and this part silver, and you know this part over here, uh, gray or gunmetal or whatever, flat black, blah 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 blah. You probably just say to yourself, oh man, this is going to be awesome, I'm going to do a really good job of painting this, blah 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 blah. After when you're done, 
Let's go to the last step. Guess what? You have to put a panel on top of this part over here. That equals it covers everything up. So therefore, you don't need to paint all these crap over here. Because this part eventually gets covered up. Cute, huh? Especially on Timea cars. Be careful when you're building Timea cars. It's a trap. Especially rally cars. Happened to my friend before. He was doing like a, I don't know, Crossworth Escort. And um, he start build, start painting all these uh, chassis stuff. And he paint and paint. And after a while, I, I, I even told him earlier, I was like, you don't need to paint all these crap because it gets covered up a while. Uh, it gets covered up at the end. And he doesn't believe me. And he's like, what the hell? I need to cover all these crap up. And I'm like, told you. And that's why you need to go through the instructions first sometimes before you build all these things. Sort of like, I don't know, get an idea of, um, to avoid, I don't know, to save yourself some money and to avoid some stupid stuff like this, okay? And pretty much this is the, all I have to say and uh, um, for today. So as you can tell, these are like the only things that you need when you're building like a normal typical model car. You don't need all these fancy saws, drills, and all these crap. If you want to build like a normal model car, the stuff you need, sorry, well not this guy here, the stuff you need is pretty much you, you see over here. You don't need other things, you don't need a saw, um, oh, you need sandpaper, uh, sandpaper, um, I like to use 400 grit to get rid of the flash, you know the flash that's always uh, on this part here, and maybe on these part here, and maybe on top of here. Get rid of those flash with 400 grit and um, smooth it out with 800. Apply primer, then paint, paint, I don't know, paint, sand with old 800 and um, paint it again, sand it down, and clear, and, and you know, the rest of the, the rest is history. I'll make a video of how to paint, um, how to paint the body later on, okay? And pretty much this is all I have to say for today. Again, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to private message me via Facebook. And um, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.